It's not really exciting. Well, in general, the breaks in action are thankfully brief. You do come across areas like this where you're just running down a path without anything to kill, and it's just so boring. The only time the game really breaks up this linear format is when it's presenting you with something like this, where there's a sealed door and you need a specific item to open it. So you're forced to backtrack in the same area, go down a specific fork in the road, find the item that you're looking for, backtrack once again, kill off any new enemies that appear, and finally open up the sealed door with whatever item you've collected. I do have to give the game credit for using the potential of both of its characters though, as there are some areas that can only be accessed by either Yoshitsune or Benkei. Though I really shouldn't praise that aspect of the game too much, since it really just adds another level of backtracking. I got enough of that in Metroid Prime. But then again, the main aspect of this game is its hack and slash combat, which it does very well. It's fast paced, fluent, and fun, and it works really, really well. It's generally enjoyable. And, well, I have to admit, it also lends itself to some great montage opportunities as well. Stop! Hammer time! Fresh new kicks and bands. You got it like that, now you know you want to dance. So move out of your seat and get a five go and catch this beat while it's rolling. Hold on, pump a little bit and let the noise go on more. like that. Like that. But now let's take a moment to talk about the bosses. This is where the game really starts to get unfair because, well, not only is there a ton of bosses in this game, but every single one of them is hard as balls. I'm quite serious here. If you try to go in and fight a boss, swords flailing like you can do with pretty much any other enemy in the game, you will not only get massacred, you will get raped alongside. Of course, most bosses do have some sort of pattern to them, but it can be pretty difficult to figure out, and not to mention it's almost impossible to dodge them if you're in the middle of a combo, since you can't just cancel a move once you've started doing it. Well, that's pretty much there is to the gameplay. It's just run and hack and slash and run some more and hack and slash. Hang on. There was something else in this game that I had to talk about. Oh, right, right. Graphics and music. Almost forgot. Right. <clears throat> in terms of graphics, I'll just say that, well, I never thought that Blood Spatters and Sakura Blossoms would ever look so good together. Of course, the show stealer here are the CG cutscenes, and there are a ton of them throughout the game. And, well, they look awesome. I mean it, the characters are well detailed, and even the bit players look very nice. The action in them is actually pretty good too, almost comparable to the sword fights that you have in the game. That isn't to say that the in-game graphics aren't impressive either. For the time that it was made, it is a pretty graphically interesting game. The main characters and the bosses all have very unique designs, and while the foot soldiers do have some pretty generic designs, they're still fun to look at. And the backgrounds are just beautiful, bringing to life the beauty and the sublime of feudal era Japan to a T. However, there are a few areas where you can tell the game designers got a tad lazy, and of course there are a few hiccups as well. The frame rate seems to suffer for some reason or another throughout the game at random points. It's like for some reason you were watching me on camera, and then all of a sudden you were watching me, frames started to skip or drop. It's kind of interesting really, and at the same time very, very annoying. It's annoying, isn't it? However, it doesn't happen nearly often enough to spoil your enjoyment of the game, and it still looks amazing. But what's better than a game with really good graphics? Really good music to complement that, and this game 
has that as well. The developers obviously put a lot of thought into the type of sounds they wanted in this game, and it works out really, really well. I'm not really a good judge of Japanese voice acting, but the characters here put a lot of passion behind their voices, which gives them a bit more character to complement their one-dimensional personalities. Sound effects for the sword are also well done, though they do sound like they come out of a cheap Japanese movie now and then. What steals the show is the soundtrack itself, which is composed entirely of traditional sounding Japanese music and instruments. Seriously, if you never thought a flute could sound threatening, just listen to what happens every time you engage an enemy in combat. The flutes are the harbingers of death and doom! The game is also very short, and this is the last thing I can really talk about here, but yeah, it's shorter than God of War short. I mean, hack and slash games aren't really known for being very lengthy, and this game also suffers from having some really low replayability since it's a very linear adventure, but still, a dedicated player can blow through the normal mode on this game in about 5 hours, and an even more dedicated player the hard mode in about 10. Ugh. This is why I prefer JRPGs to hack and slashes. I mean, they may be completely nonsensical and have no grounding in reality, but at least I get a few more hours out of them. And so that's Genji Dawn of the Samurai. And while it's not really the best game I've ever played, it's certainly not the worst either. It's a decent hack and slash, and it will keep you entertained for a few hours. Plus, you really don't have a right not to check it out now since you can pick this game up for like two or three dollars in your local bargain bin and the story while simplistic is pretty relevant to well Japanese folklore and fables it's very enjoyable of course if you really want a historical account of middle-aged Japan then you really need to go and read the novel I've read it but just be warned that it is incredibly slow playing this game is faster but as you can see it's not really rooted in historical a accuracies now this game is fun i'll give it that if a bit short but you will get your jollies out of it especially if you like cutting things up with a sword and let's be honest who doesn't it but here you get to do it all pretty like and i have no doubt that this game will live on in history as one of the better hack and slashes for the PS2. <laughs> well, um, at least until people start getting a hold of its sequel, that is. Fuck. I regret nothing!